Attention chiropractors, slayers of subluxation, unleashers of the imprisoned impulse. I am Dr. Anthony Pellegrino from ChiroEdge, and welcome to this week's episode of the Chiropractic Research Breakdown, where each week we break down the most relevant chiropractic science and philosophy to empower you with the ammo and certainty necessary to change your community from the inside out. We're going to be diving into some mental health today. Before we do that, I mentioned a couple podcast episodes ago, the One Funnel Away Challenge. This month's challenge is going to start March 25th. Uh, There's two things that we're doing together as a group this month, if you guys are all in. The first is, is we've decided to go ahead and take advantage of Multiple Sclerosis Awareness Month. So check out the MS podcast episodes for this month. And each week in our individual practices, we are posting an educational video every week, including on the last week of the month, we're going to be doing a educational video that's a video testimonial from a patient with MS. We're going to be, going to be creating a custom audience together about MS and just educating our community. We've already begun to see referrals from the MS handouts, etc., that we have been using in the practice. Uh, so please jump on that. Take advantage of that. The One Funnel Away Challenge is something from the team over at ClickFunnels, Russell Brunson, as basically, if you've ever seen any of the ads that say, if I lost everything, how would I go from zero to where I'm at in 30 days? I have begun looking at the content that's in there. And honestly, they just give you some accountability, give you something to do in terms of understanding online traffic, online funnels, how to build it, how to utilize Facebook and Instagram and how to use YouTube and how to use Google and how to use all of that different stuff how to write copy, how to sell online, how to relate to the problem points of your prospects and generate them into leads and into patients. And it's been absolutely phenomenal so far. So if you guys want to join that, it's well worth the 100 bucks. And that's I have a redirect link for you guys. That's kyroedgemedia.com slash funnel. So let's dive into it. Today, we're going to be discussing an article that was published in Frontiers in Psychiatry earlier this year in 2019. It's called Heart Rate Variability as an Indicator of Clinical State in Depression. Now, what's really cool is because I was expressing health last week and I didn't record an episode because I sounded like Steve Urkel, we're a week behind. So I have the opportunity to actually know what utilizing this research in handout form and social media form is generating the questions that are generated, see exactly how people have been really grasping onto this information and let me tell you, people were literally coming, they were getting one of these handouts about this research, and they were saying, hey, this is so good, can I have another, can I have a stack, I have to give this to my friends, okay? So if you're not talking, if you, I mean, if you're not using our content at cardwedgemedia.com, whatever, but if you're not talking about mental health in your practice regularly, you're missing a huge, huge, huge portion of how subluxation and neurologically based chiropractic care is going to change the trajectory of the health in our country. This is an amazingly hot topic. We actually have these paper holders up in our windows as well, where we put our three handouts of the week. And my team had to keep going up because people on their way out would actually see it. And they were taking the handout out of the window. And they, I guess for some reason they, they did that instead of just asking for more. So let's just say people really care about depression. So the essentials on this paper, remember what it's called is heart rate variability as an indicator of clinical state and depression It's from the Department of Psychiatry and Psychotherapy in University Hospital in Leipzig, Germany. They were looking at heart rate variability, which is an indicator of the function of the autonomic nervous system. It's something that's measured using the insight if you're using that in a chiropractic practice. And they're looking at heart rate variability in individuals with depression, pre and post antidepressant medications. They wanted to see how heart rate variability was different in individuals who had depression and didn't and how it changed pre-post medication to show how the function of the autonomic nervous system related to depression severity and if they were linked. This is something we talk about all the time on this podcast, is that we're looking at bridges, and heart rate variability is something that we talk about often because the pharmaceutical industry understands what chronic sympathetic dominance is going to cause. You can look it up online, go in PubMed, and just type sympathetic stress cancer. And you'll see article after article after article about how chronic sympathetic straight reduced heart rate variability scores showing sympathetic dominance is related to everything from depression to anxiety to metastasis of cancer, a ton of different things. 
And because they see how this is being related, their obviously thought is, well, Big Pharma says, well, let's go ahead and just prescribe drugs that are going to improve this. Great. Okay. Medical doctors now are starting to get sick of the Big Pharma response, which is pill, 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 pill. And they're also starting to get sick of uh, people complaining about only getting medications. So what they are also starting to do is say, well, you know what? We don't want to just give drugs all the time. Let's go ahead and give something like vagal implants to improve the parasympathetic nervous system. So they're doing that. And then we in chiropractic are sitting here like, well, I don't know if chiropractic, is it about neck pain? Is it about back pain? Should we be icing? Should we be heating? What exercises should we be doing? Um, maybe we should be doing nutrition too. Um, maybe we should have acupuncture. Maybe we should give them a massage so they get nice and relaxed before their adjustment. And just instead of saying, guys, yes, it's the neurology. This is chiropractic. This is what we do. This is where we thrive. And talking to them about that instead of trying to be a catch-all saying, we're nervous system people. All right, that's one of my last rants on this. So they say, background info on depression, is that recent studies have drawn to light the relationship between the autonomic nervous system as a potential pathophysiological mechanism in depression. Literally looking at the function of the autonomic nervous system as the mechanism and cause of depression. So they took 62 people with depression, 65 healthy controls, aged 19 to 61 years old. They measured heart rate variability before and after taking antidepressants and assessed how depression symptom severity changed before and after taking those medications. What they found was that there was a significant difference in heart rate variability scores between healthy people and depressed people. The first indication that depression isn't just in the head, but is actually an autonomic nervous system issue is that there's differences in these scores between healthy people and depressed people before any medication. It's not just in the head. It's literally the function of the autonomic nervous system. These people are stuck in sympathetic dominance. They described what they found as people with depression having a quote, I love this, reduced ability of the parasympathetic nervous system to regulate the heart rate via vagal activity. I'm going to repeat that. The pharmaceutical whatever, people who are looking to give antidepressants, said that people with depression have a reduced ability of the parasympathetic nervous system to regulate the heart rate via vagal activity. Well, guess what? Chiropractic improves that. They say that this indicates short-term flexibility of the autonomic nervous system to adapt to changing environments and tasks. Once again, they found diminished short-term flexibility of the autonomic nervous system to adapt to changing environment and tasks. I've never heard a more clear definition of what chiropractic helps improve than improving flexibility of the autonomic nervous system to adapt to changing environments and tasks by correcting subluxation, which stops our body's ability to adapt. So this is literally the Department of Psychiatry and Psychotherapy saying, hey, we have all these indicators of these things that chiropractors improve. We just don't know that chiropractors improve them because they're hung up about whether or not they should be taking Juice Plus or the flipping keto diet. And that's all they're educating the public about instead of what actually happens neurologically with subluxation. So why don't we just throw antidepressants at them and see how this HRV score improves? After two weeks of antidepressant medication, symptoms of depression improved and heart rate variability improved. So they gave them the meds. They found that HRV changes were more in women than men, and they interpreted this as an increase in vagal activity. Our so results support the hypothesis of normalization of HRV parameters and improvements of symptom severity in depression and correspondence to an increase in heart rate variability parameters and values. What they are saying is that improving the HRV, which we know chiropractic does, is in the pre by correcting subluxation, improves the symptoms of depression. They say that this may be due to a link between both. Nonetheless, the exact mechanism behind the remit link remains unclear. A possible mechanism could be a regulation deficit between the two branches of the autonomic nervous system. Okay. A possible mechanism could be a deficit in regulation between balance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is what they said. We have measurements. We have research. We assess clinically how chiropractic care, specific to correcting subluxation, improves HRV parameters, indicating an improvement in regulation between the two branches of the autonomic nervous system. We see that in practice each and every day. 
Go in the Insight CLA Facebook group. Let David Fletcher use words that are well above 99% of the profession's head. And you have to go get out a Google Translator to be able to understand what the heck he's saying. But once you translate it, you can understand, oh, my God, this is what we do each and every day in practice. If you're not talking about mental health on a regular basis, if you are not getting referrals for people who have an inability to adapt, a.k.a. anxiety and depression, please, please, please go back and listen and read this research and start getting the handouts that we give out and start sharing the social media posts on the Cairo Edge page and just do it because your community deserves it. There's women and children and parents and adults and dads and kids and all their lives are on the line. And the future of our political system is on the line because people are subluxated and everybody has anxiety and depression. So go out there, be a subluxation slayer, slay those subluxations, assess specifically, find the angle, find the vector, deliver the adjustment, leave it alone, and let people heal. Join us, guys. Post videos about this stuff on your Facebook page. Don't just sit back and listen on your car ride. Utilize this. Take action. Join us. I hope you guys got some good information here. Hope this gives you the, the, the knowledge, the excitement that it is to go out there and thrive in your community this week. The, the confidence, the authority to go out there and tell people that we have the answer for whatever they have going on in their lives. Physically, chemically, emotionally, chiropractic is the answer. Thank you for listening. I love you. I'll see you guys in the next episode.